What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today is part two. We'll be reacting to the woman's side of this video of what what professions you should avoid dating within women. So we'll take a, a look at this. So I actually wanted to give some astrological influences of what to go into someone being a stay-at-home mom. And I'm letting you know, I'm looking at this concept very broadly and in the sense of being, I don't think anyone, especially in this evolutionary time period, is meant to truly be a stay at home. Like that, this is your reality. I think that every we're at a point where everyone is able to actualize some form of their skill set. And if you didn't, if you didn't five years ago, after going through the North Node in Gemini and everything, there's some everyone's got a skill that they could use on the internet or in this new day and age to get it. Okay. So, but just when I think of the term stay at home mom, I'm think, thinking as like lots of activity in this realm, uh, ruler of this domain. So obviously we're going to go to the fourth house. This isn't hard to see. So any influences in the fourth house can create this. What's really going to create that, that tie? Well, one, uh, at a deeper influence, the ruler of one's fourth being connected to the ascendant. Okay, or the uh, ruler of the ascendant being connected to the fourth. Okay, uh, other angles, other angles in the chart, whether it be the tenth or the seventh, having that same influence. Just calling for that, the main identity of the individual uh, in this realm. But then when we evaluate the fourth and the tenth, we see it involves career, like identity. So say we get cancer here in the 10th house. This can be someone who is easily career oriented as well as seen as a motherly type figure who has a family and that controls, you know, both domains. Now, I want to go a little further. Let's look. Where's the sorrow? Where's the sorrow in being a stay-at-home mom, how can that present itself? And I always kind of love looking at this, how different people are going to re relate to parenthood. First, you're going to look at your moon sign, right? You're the, the parent, the holder of that moon sign. That is that is showing you emotionally the expression level. Then we want to go to the house position. So... I'm going to immediately go to the 12th house because this is the house of many things, but there's a hint of sorrow attached to it. So karmically, if one had a relationship with their mom where they didn't get adequate nurturing and their moon in, is in the 12th house, there can be a, a deep insecurity. Not that I don't want to be a parent, but I don't know if I really can do this. Okay, which just creates a overwhelming experience within itself. Okay, and then we can just further perpetuate different scenarios. But overall, uh, I want to give the advice of kind of saying because we're gonna talk, we're talking about like what professions and stuff like that. Being within being a stay at home parent. Or in, in this case, we're talking about moms or whatever, there just has to be a, a sense of self. There has to be a core identity. So in a simple sense, if one comes from a large family and their mother was a stay-at-home mom, and astrologically we see influence of like the second house, the fourth house, uh, it's a tradition, right? There's a natural idea. Okay, this is who I am. That's who my mom was, right? Relating to that. But there, you will need to check other things. In the next, in the next vein, is when the timing, and the same concept can be used for marriage. Why we say like seriously, let's 
take our time before marrying, take our time to our Saturn return before actually marrying because it's given us room to grow and evolve and create the structure and identity of self before we merge into this union. So you want to evaluate in that sense, where's this person's identity? What have they achieved? What are their aspirations? Can they handle this? So I've given you kind of the keys and how to look at it. I, I feel like it's so natural. I feel like st when I hear this term stay at home mom, it, it, I get it. I get it in the broad sense, but it's, a, it's, it's just natural. Like that's your domain. And maybe because I'm a creative person, but as I will explain in this video, there there's a time period where it it definitely was difficult. So we'll get back to reacting. There are some common professions that I see in women. The most common one that I see is teacher. The second most common is nurse. But those cases are not cases where the female is really difficult or litigious or anything like that. They're just kind of run-of-the-mill cases. Um, the most common profession that I see in the female parties in my divorces, and this is over 13 years of cases. Um, oh, my God. I'm so nervous is, um, stay at home mom. Um, hate me. I know y'all are going to hate me, but let me explain why. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a, I'm a man of the mind and I'm no body language expert or anything. I'm just into it and know what I know. Uh, I sense here that this woman may not be being fully honest about the data as she was in our previous video. I feel like there's more of a personal, of her personal opinion here. We're in, on the men's side, I feel like it was actually the data. I feel like there's a lot of personal embellishing here. So she's going to give her, her thoughts on, on why she believes so and saying, now, I'm disputing the data. I feel intuitively not a lot of, in recent times, single stay-at-home moms getting divorced. It's possible. It's because it's a big world. I'm just going off of my intuition and what I feel. I don't really feel that. But we'll listen to her and then react. Um, number one, when you're divorcing a stay-at-home mom, they are paralyzed with fear. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so, because their whole life is going to change. They are going to have to go back to the workforce. They're going to have to possibly move. Their finances are about to be very different. There's lots of things that they don't know financially about what's going on. And so um, they tend to stick their head in the sand and stall. And so the cases become very contested and very expensive. The second reason that I see that stay-at-home moms end up being the most uh, common profession in a divorce is that I think there's a tendency, and this is completely my opinion, just based on my observations. Okay, she said it they so. tend to focus so much on the children, and the husband focuses so much on career that she they first of all they don't feel appreciated by one another, but the husband starts feeling like an ATM, and the wife becomes completely focused on the children, and they tend to grow apart. Okay, so so let's get into it. That was that's her her opinion. I think with this here cultural perception where you grow up at, because you got thinking in, in a grand scale, there are really uh, materially successful men or women, and those marriages deteriorate. So I she could be coming from really uh, this perception. I. I could only speak as me, as a black man from where I'm at, you know, and for the stay-at-home moms that, that I've known, and I've, I've, I've grown up and around, around a good amount, that hasn't been my reality. So it's interesting. So now, all those things could definitely be valid. But what I want to say here on this is, it's more in a past sense, and this is what I know from a past sense. This is all knowing. When we're going to the 50s and 60s, this is where this mindset is, is stemming from. In the 50s, 60s, 70s, to be a stay-at-home mom is extremely difficult because collectively, 
there to be a woman was difficult and the oppression that was there. So, and then once again, culturally, the different women of those times, black women were going through some things where they weren't stay at home moms. They weren't, they were working. Now, what's interesting is when you go ahead and let's say in a different race, Caucasian wise, even culturally, let's say like even like Italians, right? Those moms, very traditional, stay at home, cook the food, take care of the kids, lots of emotional problems. You go and do the dad in, like I said, this is a knowing, I'm just prefacing that because it's annoying. <laughs> These. Those times you you do the data ask anyone who will tell you they may have an aunt, a mom, someone who is mentally ill, and they may at that time necessarily not have known that or even diagnosed it in a way that the they may have been an alcoholic, uh, just very moody or suffer from de depression, things of that nature. Okay, so as things have grown collectively in the vision you have for for your daughter's change, you, there will still be stay-at-home moms. I think more in this uh, category, what we're talking about is maybe women who, like she said, never got acclimated. So you just, into the real world, never had your own apartment, never had your own job. And that's where I'm kind of disconnecting from this. So I'm actually going to make this a whole video by itself and then talk more about, give my idea about the profession. So let's react to this. How do we feel about uh, men, you, you chiming in, stay at home mom, uh, women out there who have had the experience, I guess, being in this position, because realistically, women take time off and then they go back. It's, but it's a big world. It's a big world. And we're all just tuned to our perception. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Check for the next video, which will be about what we think professions we should, uh, we should stay away from. Till next time, peace.